Several important points need to be observed when using an oil bath in order to achieve the optimum working conditions. In order to keep the thermal loading within limits and also to avoid severe variations in the working temperature of the bath, a relationship between the weight of the batch or hourly throughput of the furnace and the volume of quenchant must be maintained. Consequently, the following values can be used as a guide to the relationship between the weight of quenching oil and the gross weight of the batch to be quenched. Open oil baths 10 is to 1. Sealed furnaces 10 is to 1 to 7 is to 1. Hot quenching oils used at their highest temperatures 10 is to 1 to 15 is to 1. These values can also be used where quenching of small batches at short intervals takes place and the hourly throughput of steel is then used in the calculation. Now we see the effect of loading pattern. This relationship depends upon the conditions of the use of the oil and upon the size of the components. Larger components which take longer to cool cause a lower thermal loading to the oil bath than tightly packed batches of small components which give off their heat rapidly. The cooling and the heating elements of the heat exchanger should not be made of copper as this acts as a catalyst in the oxidation of all mineral oil products. The level of agitation in the system must not be excessive such that air is drawn into the oil. This condition will result in foaming and increased oxidation of the oil. The heating area loading of the heating elements should be limited to about 1 watt per centimeter square. If a higher loading is used, good movement of oil in the area of the elements must be maintained to avoid overheating. The life of water miscible quenchants is usually limited by several factors. In the case of induction hardening operations, the solution has to be replaced after periodic intervals due to the effects of contaminations from previous processes. The thermal loading can also take its toll in the long term. In view of this and the need to control the concentration of solution, monitoring is required for polymer quenchant solutions. If you do have any more doubts, feel free to get in touch with me. You are always welcome. Hope to see you again. This is Dr. Castle signing off. Goodbye and good luck.